Live from Zany's Comedy Club in Nashville, Tennessee, this is the Adam Carolla Show. Adam's guest today, Jason Whitlock and Nate Bargatze. With Gina Grad on news, Paul Bryan on sound effects, and a spirited round of blah, blah, blah. And now, as far as he's concerned, Music City is wherever John Hyatt, John Popper, and Graham Parker are. Adam Corolla! Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. If Joy's been getting on, man, they get on. Thanks for coming out today. Hi, guy. I'm going to bring uh, Jason Whitlock out here in a few moments. I just scratched down a couple of notes on my uh, buck slip. So, random shit I want to talk about for, uh, before we get going. A couple things. Love you too, man. I was looking out the uh, 23rd window uh, uh, floor of my hotel by the convention center over here. Is that the convention center that's right in the middle of the town there? They got grass on the roof. I thought that's cool. But then I thought, if you got grass on your roof, you're either a brand new building or an old fucking building. It's just no medium buildings with grass. No, yeah, my condo from 1988. Yeah, it's got grass on the roof. Now, it's got to be brand new or thatched in England somewhere. So I thought grass on the roof, that's old and that's new. And then the uh, other example of that I was thinking about is like the world's oldest thing and the world's newest thing is a tablet. It's either... <laughs> Moses bringing it down from the mountain or you're at the fucking Mac store, right? There's no 70s era tablets. Um, I, uh, I was thinking about uh, my dog. This is a weird concept, but I'm gonna try it out on you. I got a dog, 110 pound lab named Phil. He's great, he's a little fucking dumb. He's eating his own shit now. <laughs> Sounds gross, but it's a lot cheaper than feeding him because it just, <laughs> same can Alpo just cycles continuously through like a nuclear battleship or something, just steams forever. But um, he goes outside and then I stand by the sliding door and then I go, come on inside, Phil, come, come Phil. And he looks at me, and then I go, come on, Phil, we're going inside. Come on, on out, it's cold out here. Come on, Phil. And he just looks at me, and then I go, Phil! And he goes, oh, fuck it, and he runs at me. He runs at me. And I was thinking, I don't think there's any person I know who works this way. Like, do you know anyone where you go, hey, Steve, come here, and he goes, nothing. Steve, come on, come over here, nothing. Maybe on the third time he walks toward you, but he doesn't fucking, Steve doesn't run at you the third. <laughs> I was, uh, I flew over here on Mark Gargus's G5 <laughs> private fucking jet. Oh, the best. You pull up to the private airport, you fucking drop your bag. I don't even hand my bag to the guy who's taking it. I fucking throw it. I go, go get, go get it. <laughs> Fetch that shit and put it on the fucking plane. Backpack, I throw the other direction. That's yeah, over there. No, I'm not going to throw it in the same place. Be less work for you. But I got, uh, so we flew over here privately, which was just fucking awesome and uh it's it the, the the private jet path doesn't fly on the commercial jet pa path like the commercials are like 33 34,000 feet and the private jets are like 41 but i kind of wish they flew next to the southwest flights because i'd be like hey fucking loser oh you don't you don't have don julio on your flight What's that, a Diet Fresca? 
<laughs> Have fun with that sack of pretzels, bitch. I got lobster back here. Sadly, I am flying to Florida tomorrow on Southwest, so. I was thinking about it. it going from private jets to Southwest in under 24 hours is like, you just drinking a great single malt scotch and someone slaps it out of your hand and hands you an O'Doul's. <laughs> this is brutal. I, uh, Brian Callen is coming out here uh, doing a show tonight. Yeah, I just saw him at the hotel, except for I, I did one of these moves. I was outside the hotel sitting on the bench waiting for uh, the Uber and a couple people, you guys are nice, Nashville's nice. Couple people came up to me, said hi, you know, said hi to them. Another cup group came up and then Brian Callen drove by in his rental car and he rolled the window down and he went, hey Adam, how you doing? And I was like, hey dude, yeah, all right. And I looked back down again because I thought he was one of you, you know? <laughs> let's, let's be honest. He got out of his car and came up to me, so that at that point I, I recognized him as a fellow one of me, you know. Uh, I was funny, Jason Whitlock, I should ask him when he comes out here, but Jason Whitlock is uh, black, and uh, no, no, but he's okay. He, can, he thinks like us. It's fine, it's fine, don't worry about it. Guy just took his wallet off the table and stuffed it down his pants. <laughs> He's fine. He's doing good. He's got money. He's got his own money. But uh, he didn't drive. I'm going to ask him about this because he didn't. He didn't drive here. He doesn't drive. And uh, I know we got a big race issue in this country, and I know there's a driving while black, but. You think there's an Ubering while black? <laughs> the cops are actually pulling black folk out of the back of Ubers and shooting them? I don't know. <laughs> if I ever do shoot a stranger, by the way, my new move is gonna be yell taser, taser, taser before I <laughs> squeeze the trigger. It couldn't fucking hurt, could it? <laughs> it's not gonna hurt. The guy who gets shot instead of tasered has to be super fucking confused. Like, that's the fucking nastiest taser I've ever... It's the loudest taser I've ever heard. Too soon. I agree. It's funny, I got my son, Sonny, in the green room over here. I gotta be intellectually honest. I've been bitching for an entire year, open the schools in California, doing battle with the teachers unions. Get the fuck back to work, you fucking, fucking loafers. I gotta get my kid back in school. My kid's been on the fucking sofa for a year. He's not in school, he's not learning. It's not the same to do that remote learning. Yesterday was his very first day back in school in over a year, and the next day I'm like, we're going to Nashville, let's, uh, let's blow this taco stand. We got a drink and meet strange pussy on the road. Come on, boy. Bring your long pants, we're going out for a steak tonight. I really am a hypocrite. One year of saying he's sitting at home, not learning, and uh, <clears throat> one day in, he's fucking absent. He made it one day before his first absent tea in over a year. Let's see, what else today? Oh, uh, all right. I think it's uh, I think it's time to bring out uh, a good friend and a funny guy and a guy who knows fucking sports, Jason Whitlock, everybody. <laughs> Hold on, we gotta get a mic. Oh, okay. Well, you wanna use the polluted one or you wanna use the 
Yeah, let's see. Let's get Jason Whitlock. Thank you, appreciate How it. How you doing, man? Good. So I'm on this side? They yeah. told me before I was on Yeah, there. whatever. I heard him talking about me not driving. He said driving while black. It's actually my problem is driving while fat. <laughs> <laughs> I had this habit of if I was getting in my car and I was going to be in my car for more than 10 minutes, I'd stop at a gas station and get a snack. Right. And so I quit driving, so I quit eating in my car. Yeah. And I started walking places. It didn't work. It helped. It <laughs> has helped. It, it didn't helped. hurt. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll upgrade yeah. it. It's helped. Yeah. So you're driving. Do you need it? You got to have a car if you're in L.A., but if you're in Nashville, can you get by? Yeah, you can get. Uber here is terrible. I mean, it's terrible. Um, the, the, what's the, black cars. Cost yeah, Uber less, black. Cost less than Uber X. Really? Yeah, because they don't have Uber X, and it's, but it's terrible. So sometimes you can be late to a flight, sitting around waiting for an Uber here. But I brought my car here, drove it for a month, and then I quit driving again. I know you had some thoughts on The Bachelor because uh, <laughs> I were talking backstage, and uh, Whitlock brought up uh, The Bachelor. Well, there was a controversy. I don't know if yeah, you guys yeah, know. You got... They had the first black Bachelor. Well, right. I need not to ask in you. history. Most black dudes are bachelors. <laughs> I mean, let's, I've seen the statistics. Let's be honest. But, I got no kids though. But so. the first recognized yeah. bachelor, yeah. black man. So before I even get into this, I need the audience to take an oath because I'm gonna say some really inappropriate shit. And uh, no cell phones. Don't rat me out. Don't, for those of you that have heard me on Glenn Beck's show or other shows, I am a Christian, but <laughs> when I'm in a comedy club, I'm more like a Richard Pryor Christian. <laughs> and so I do the same move, <laughs> but not with Christianity. <laughs> I like to do, uh, I'm not gay, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my, my, listen. To me, this whole bachelor thing is my final straw with Black Lives Matter. Because we've just, it's racism around every corner. Everything's racist. And I'm like watching The Bachelor, and it's like, how can an attractive white woman between 110 and 120 pounds go on national TV and basically say, I'm here to pursue black dick for the rest of my life. <laughs> and then be accused of racism. <laughs> if a black man's sperm isn't the vaccine for racism, I don't want to live in America. I don't. Well, and if it is some sort of vaccine, I'll do a shot, but I need a chaser. <laughs> I'm not gonna walk out to the parking lot with that taste in my mouth. So look, I'm a social justice warrior. If any ladies need the vaccine, they provided me a bathroom stall here. And it only takes one shot. You don't have to get two shots. My Johnson & Johnson works on one shot. If you would like a second shot, I'm better than Krispy Kreme. I'll get you Louboutin shoes. You want a third shot? We can talk about a trip somewhere. <laughs> so you were, uh, you were banned from Twitter, I think, last week. Did you get reinstated? Yeah, I, I was banned Friday because I criticized the founder of Black Lives Matter. Uh, who bought a 1.4 million home in Topanga? Is that Topanga? I, Topanga. Do you know there? Topanga Canyon? Not really. Topanga uh, Canyon is so white that the people are actually clear. <laughs> <laughs> it is the whitest. Like people think, oh, Bel Air, Beverly Hills, but you know, Fresh Prince is living somewhere, and that those. <laughs> You know, you got some, you got yeah. some movers and shakers in the industry living, living there. Topanga is the crunchiest, widest. It's this weird. It, it really is. I don't know if you guys know Topanga Canyon. It goes right through 
Um, it goes down to PCH. You can get down to Malibu there. But it is hippy, dippy, crunchy, you know, throw up. Hand-thrown pottery and, and uh, put some kale in it white. I mean, it is fucking white. 1.4 million for the place, and they have 1.4% black population. And I pointed that out, and I was like, well, hell, she's going to have plenty of white cops and white people to complain about. Uh, <laughs> I just find it hypocritical that, you know, that's where you would choose to live. And look, out in California, 1.4 million, you'd be shocked. Like, that's a little tiny shack in California. But if you have 1.4 million or have access to that, there's a lot of places you can choose to live. That's a choice she made to live among white people. And she's a hypocrite. And... Uh, Twitter said that, you know, I had exposed her personal information without her consent and immediately locked up my account. And because of the way I think, I was like, this is perfect. I'm going to play this for uh, publicity. I'm going to wallow in victimhood the way that they do. Yeah. And people started writing articles about it and people started calling Twitter like, why are you banning this guy for information that was out there, everybody's talking about? And so finally, Twitter folded Tuesday night and, and reinstated me. It said that uh, they said that they sent me an email. Yeah, hey, what'd they say? They sent me an email saying, thank you for uh, reaching out to us about this issue, which I did not do. I never reached out to them. And then they went on to say, we take these seriously, and we investigated, and we're in error, and we apologize. And, you're back on Twitter. And so my first tweet was to retweet my original <laughs> post and to tell you all, and I mean this with all sincerity, particularly for those of you that are believers, never apologize to these satanic motherfuckers. Yeah. Good words to live by, Jason Whitlock. All right, uh, I think uh, we should uh, welcome in uh, Gina and Bald Brian, who are back in my studio in Los Angeles. Has Gina been immunized for racism? Can we ask the question? <laughs> Have you been immunized? I, yes, she, I am uh, healthy by injection. She's, uh, <laughs> you only had one shot. Yeah, she's engaged, Jason. How dare you? Uh, how's your mic? Does it sound all right? I think so. You yeah. tell us. All right. All right, let's... So we were going to do uh, what we always do in these live shows. We do a little something called Blah Blah Blog, and uh, we get actual celebrity blogs. We'll pick three people, and then we'll try to guess who did the blog. Blog. B-L-O-G. Blog. Yes, yes. I don't even know there. I, I don't even know there were blogs anymore, but we <laughs> we found them. So I think Dawson is going to uh, tee that up for us. It's time for blah blah blog, the game where we match the celebrity with their retarded online rant. Let's play. So yeah, just to be clear, these are from Twitter nowadays. Oh, these are Twitter nowadays. I still nowadays. love the blah, right. blah, blah, blah. I knew I was right. They're mm -hmm. tweets. Mm -hmm. Jason Whitlock. <laughs> Sunday <laughs> evening reminder. You're good. You can handle anything that this week throws at you. Return to your breath and remember that everyone is going through something profound. Kindness. Sprinkle that shit everywhere. Is it Alyssa Milano? Brie Larson or Missy Elliott. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Alyssa Milano. Oh, this is tough. That's who Why? I was vote before I heard the candidates. You're voting for Alyssa Milano? Yeah. yeah. Now, what the hell is Missy Elliott doing on here? <laughs> there would be some cussing if that was Missy. There, um, Brie has turned into, what, what did she do? Play like Catwoman or Mrs. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel or whatever, whatever it was. Now she's doing Nissan commercials and women power, everything. I don't know. I'm, I'm going uh, Miss Elliot. I, I just What's am because I don't know what she's doing on here. <laughs> what do you so think, I'm Gina? Sorry, just to make sure, it's one vote for Miss Elliot. 
Missy misdemeanor or whatever. I don't know. I'm not hip. Um, yeah, I'm just glad that Brie got out of that room because that's the only movie I think of her in. Remember, she was trapped in a garden shed for 12 years. Um, I wish she'd I, go back to the shed. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, the, the swearing threw me off. I, I just assumed it was going to be a dude. Um, Alyssa, I feel like we've heard enough of. So I think it's also Missy Misdemeanor Elliot. Okay. Uh, wow. I think Jason stumbled upon it, which is when I heard sprinkle that shit everywhere and I saw Missy, I'm like, it's Missy uh, Misdemeanor Elliot. So I'm going with her too. Well, and let me just say this. Anybody who's going to tell anybody to breathe, save your breath, pardon the pun. <laughs> this whole thing where it's like, you know, these fucking f celebrities like, you got to breathe. You got to take it in. Yeah, no shit, bitch. I do it when I'm asleep and I do it when I'm drunk. If I do shit when I'm sleeping, you don't have to tell me to do it. All right, so Brian, you went with whom? Missy. Ever? Miss yeah. Missy. All right. Yeah, we got three Missy Elliots and one Alyssa Milano. Ooh, yeah. All right. The blog belongs to... Alyssa Milano. Ah, there you go. Sprinkle ah. that shit everywhere. Damn it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beginners. By the way, like, when, when you're Notice just... Notice the black guy smarter than the three white people. <laughs> Continue. Else is new. This is a good measure of intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> it's plain and simple. We are all different and unique on purpose. But we are all human beings on a quest to fulfill our purpose. And that energy should be used to uplift and love each other to the fullest. Hold on a second. What is going on with everyone having a purpose? When I was in junior high, nobody had a fucking purpose. I'd just see my dad and he'd go, my purpose is to fucking make sure no one steals this sofa and I'm gonna sit on it until I die. Nobody was unique. Nobody had a purpose. Everyone just fucking got in line and shut up and sat down. See, our ears are tuned different. Th that almost sounded erotic to me. And I was thinking, is this Ron Jeremy? I thought he died. <laughs> he's in prison. Oh, he's in prison? Yeah. I think so, right? Or, uh, or as Jason knows him, Slim. <laughs> so <laughs> hey, Bean Paul. Why don't you just walk between those bars to freedom? <laughs> Slim Shady is how I know him. Slim Shady. Sorry, go ahead, Dawson. Anything else is a waste of our existence. Spread love, joy, optimism, and positivity always. Is it Alicia Keys? Mm -hmm. Steph Curry? Mm -hmm. Or John Legend? Oh, Ooh. Shit. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the Mount Rushmore of light-skinned black people. It is. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Woo! Three wonders and pianos right there. <laughs> These are all the lightest black people we have to offer up. The African American Hall of Fame. Right That's there. right. <laughs> wow. Well, man, I mean, John Legend, he's got, first off, that is the greatest 70s cop name ever, right? John Legend, it just kicks a door in and yells freeze, you know. Wow, this is tough. I'm gonna let you go first, Jason. I, I'm in love with Alicia Keys, but I'm not gonna give it to her. Uh, I'm gonna go with John Legend. Mm. I'm gonna go with John Legend. Elisa's a great uh, piano player, right? Yes. Oh yeah. Didn't they? Didn't her parents kind of drop the ball by not naming her Ivory Keys? <laughs> That'd be the greatest <laughs> piano playing name ever, right? And it'd be yeah, great because she'd be playing the piano and people go, "That's Ivory Keys." Yeah. What's her real name? <laughs> That's her real fucking name. Yeah, you're dangerously close to drag queen territory. <laughs> All right, so uh, you got a Le you went with Alicia Keys? No, I went oh, John Legend. Oh, you went John Legend. Yeah. All right, Brian, what do you think? Uh, I think John Legend is a little disconnected from reality these days, so I too will go with John Legend. It's a, it's a metrosexual tweet. Sheena, uh, what do you think? Shit. Well, I was going to say John Legend because he's tweeting for two these days because uh, Chrissy Teigen, I think, is, is out. Oh, but, you know, just to balance things out, I'll go with Alicia. I'll go with Ivory. 
Mm. Let's see. Mistake. What's Steph, Steph? What's Steph Curry doing? Uh, Steph, what's he, he doing, doing up anything. there? Yeah, his you wife know, would have tweeted that, not him. You <laughs> know sports. All right, I'm going uh, Alicia Keys as well. The blog belongs to Steph Curry. Oh! 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 oh, God. oh you wow. bamboozled me. I'm, I'm I wanted to go for him, but then you're the sports guy. You shook your head. Wow. I didn't know Steph had oh, that in him. Man. <laughs> Must be trying to make up with his wife. Hey, can I get a drink, by the way? I'm sorry. I need, I need some tequila. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can Lime. get Jason out of his shell. Yeah. <laughs> Start saying what's really on his mind. God damn it. I wanted Steph Curry, but you know so much about sports. All right, here we go, Dawson. Jeff Bezos is now worth $193 billion. He makes $152,000 per minute, and yet his workers are forced to defecate in bags and face retaliation for trying to exercise their right to collectively bargain. Don't pretend this is normal. Is it Amy Schumer, Patricia Arquette, or Ilhan Omar? Well, wait a minute. De they defecate in bags over at uh, Amazon? And they pee in bottles, allegedly. For self-stealing bags. They're what? They allegedly, because they don't have time for bathroom breaks. But where they're manufacturing the cheap junk we all buy, not at the hub in Tennessee, right? No, supposedly. Yeah, the packaging centers. Yeah. That's why they have boxes and bags. Really? That's the story. Well, first off, well, hold on a second. I want to explore this bag defecation <laughs> business. Now... Do you wear the bag or do you just keep it next to you? And you sort of treat it like an air sick bag in an airplane? Yeah. I don't think it's like a colostomy bag per se. I would imagine if this is really happening, they like line a box with a bag because, you know, we're not animals. <laughs> I'm gonna need to see more dookie based evidence before I sign <laughs> off on that. Uh, Ilhan Omar, if I had a place to take a dump, it'd be in that weird <laughs> turban she wears. Dude's <laughs> turban. But I have too much respect for the woman to ever do that. <laughs> All right. This, what the hell's Amy Schumer doing up here? That's the question. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go... Patricia, is that Patricia Arquette? Yes. Yeah, I'm going Patricia Arquette. Yeah, this uh, Amy Sh Amy Schumer is too smart for this. She crafts jokes <laughs> and like has like uh, <laughs> has thoughts that she crafts. So I'm gonna eliminate her and go with Patricia Arque Arquette as well. Patricia oh Arquette. God. That was gonna be my guess too. But uh, Amy Schumer is very much into social justice these days. But I do, I would like to think there would be some sort of a punchline. Um, if you if you all are going Arquette, I'll go Omar. All right. You found three women I wouldn't want to immunize. I got to give you credit for that. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, I'm gonna go Omar as well. I, I wanted to go Patricia Arquette, but I, we need some diversity. I, I'm, Amy Schumer didn't say this, I don't think. So I'm gonna go Omar. All right. The blog belongs to Ilhan Omar. All right. Damn it. Me and Jay all the way. <clears throat> Two for three. Wow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Bitch, I don't have any security or armed guards around me. Come see me and tell me to my face how not real my world is. I dare you. You know nothing about me or my life. The only criminals I see right now are the police who are paid to protect the people. But police are protected by the judges and the criminal justice system, which is a joke because there is no justice if you are a person of color. Ivanka Trump. <laughs> is it Cardi B? Oh, Cardi B. Madonna. Ooh. Or Cher. Oh, Ooh, wow. Cher. Well, this is tough. I, 
I, I would immunize all three. <laughs> <laughs> Feels. What are your thoughts, Gina? Well, as, let's see, I think Dawson got three words into it when I thought, I bet this is Cardi B. Mm -hmm. um, Madonna doesn't have this kind of ire or fire anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Cher, I mean, she's a dark lady, granite. Um, yes. But um, I think this is Cardi B. Cardi B. Yeah. Came out of the gate strong with bitch. It's, it's, Cardi B's got my vote, too. Sounds like Cardi B. Jason, what do you think? It's Madonna. Yes. Oh, Car yes. Cardi B. <laughs> there were actually, I think there was punctuation in that tweet. That is not Cardi B. <laughs> That's Madonna. That good Detroit education Madonna got. Ah, Cher is like just sitting in Malibu somewhere, still fucking pissed off. Um, all right, let's see. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Madonna too because it feels too on the nose for Cardi B. The blog belongs to Madonna. Oh. Yes. There is no way that she doesn't have a thousand security guards. And she starts with, bitch, I got no security, come at me. Well, okay. she was on the toilet when she tweeted it. <laughs> and technically, there was no security in the bathroom. They're in the fair. entry hall. That's fair. So Whitlock's got three. What do I got, two? I spend too much time on Twitter. That's all that's proved. Adam and Gina each have one. Ooh. Oh, I got one only? Yes. Oh, shit. It's okay, though. Bald Brian has zero. It's one more than me. <laughs> All the right. guests are always really good at this. Last blog. Policing is a public health crisis. Mass incarceration is a public health crisis. Housing injustice is a public health crisis. Medical apartheid is a public health crisis. Racism is a public health crisis. Joe Biden. Is it Lena Dunham. <laughs> Ayanna Presley. Ooh. Or Mary J. Blige. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Lena Dunham. Let's see. Oh, it's Lena Dunham. I it can't. Well, what happened to formerly funny people who just go on these fucking blowhard jags all the time? Okay. Uh, what do you think, Gina? I think Lena Dunham is too busy hawking her new plus-size clothing line to get political. I haven't heard from Mary J. Blige in a hot minute. I'm going Ayanna Presley. Ooh, yeah. okay, Brian. Us bald guys got to stick together, so I'll go with the bald fella. In the Come middle. on, Brian. What do you think, Jason? Oh, yeah, it's Lena Dunham. Lena Dunham. And she's been immunized 10 million times. <laughs> I'm going, uh, is it Anna Presley? Is that how we say? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm going Anna Presley. The blog belongs to Ayanna Presley. Yay! Yeah! He Jason died. Whitlock <laughs> with the win. Aww. Until next time, keep your fingers on your keyboards and your heads up your asses so we can play another round of Blah Blah Blah. Well, uh, Nate Mergazzi's uh, in the green room waiting to come out on stage. I know, local boy, makes good. So uh, why don't we do uh, a round of the news, Gina Grad, and then we'll, uh, we'll roll into uh, Unprepared with uh, me and Nate. Should we Let's do it? Let's do it. The news with Gina Grad. Former supermodel Paulina Poroskova, you remember her, of course, mm -hmm. also the former wife of Cars frontman Rick Ocasek for a time, is gracing the cover of Vogue Czechoslovakia naked. She's doing this. By the 40 way, years. Vogue yes. Czechoslovakia sounds like something a model's agent would threaten her with. Like, you don't do this fucking cover girl shoot, and you're gonna be on the cover of Vogue Czechoslovakia. And she like goes and slams the door. That's good. 
That's good. And true. This is 40 years after she first graced the cover of Vogue at 16. This time, she poses in a see-through bodysuit with little swans over her nipples. Do we have that picture? You know, uh, well, she yeah. looks good, but you know you're getting fucking old when your hot chick references are 40 years old. Like, I'm, like I'll say to my son, she's hot, she's no Claudia Schiffer. <laughs> my, my, my son will go, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I still, don't know any young, new, hot people. I'm still big on Holly Berry. Yeah, this is, uh, she's hot. I don't know if she's bounced back from Rick Ocasek from the cars. I do feel like, <clears throat> You know, when uh, you have, think about having sex with a woman, you have to kind of think about who she's had sex with last before she gets to you, you know what I mean? And I don't want like Jason Momoa to be the last <laughs> dick in that pussy, but Rick Ocasek, I feel like my what dick was, was probably bigger than his, probably. I got to check on it. And I bet I could fuck better than him, too. And there's not a lot of guys in bands that I can say that about, but I think she would be pleasantly surprised with me. That's very confident. Yeah, Rick Ocasek doesn't look like he could fuck at all, right? He's too weird, he's too tall, he's too thin. I don't know who Rick is. I'm sorry. I love that. Oh. See an earth, wind, and fire? I, <laughs> far from it. If not, I don't I know. would be devastated if you did know who oh. Rick, okay. He's the, he's the lead singer for the band The Cars. Well, of course, you Uber everywhere, so yeah. why would you know that? <laughs> and uh, I think he passed four years ago or two years ago. I, I don't Recently. know anymore with, with COVID. But anyway, she's, she's held up uh, quite nicely. Well, we have another lady that's gracing the cover of a magazine. And also, if you're going to get yes. with somebody, you want to get with someone whose previous partner died. Because you don't avoid all that shit where like, oh, who's, up, who's coming up the door? Oh, Rick, he left one of his loafers in the master bedroom. He's coming back in. You know that shit? No late night tap. <clears throat> yeah, we don't, yeah, you don't have to deal with that. Sorry, go ahead. David Hasselhoff's daughter, Haley, has become the first plus-size model, nude model, to grace Playboy Deutschland's cover, <laughs> according to page six. Listen, oh, I've been a modeling oh, agent for over 44 <laughs> years in this town. You don't listen to me and do that cover girl shoot. You're going to end up on the cover of Playboy Deutschland. <laughs> See, this joke works universally. I know. So, uh... She said, I get to make this movement for curvy women during a global pandemic and let them know they have every right to celebrate their bodies. We have a picture. Hey, um, all right, a couple things. Yeah. <laughs> fat don't always mean curvy. Sometimes <laughs> you're just fat. <laughs> you're not curvy, you're just curve. It's all going out. More you know. A fucking biscuit is not curvy, it's just round. Oh, yes. No, okay. no. Ah. You know what they should call this? Mm. Playboy Inner City. Mm -hmm. because I know a lot of brothers that would oh, love yeah. this. <laughs> a lot of brothers. No, I'm, I'm, I Playboy go. Playboy Harlem. I go, I go for the Rick Ocasek sloppy <laughs> seconds. I don't touch this. Well, That's this, my move. she's not the only one. She's not the first plus size gal to grace this publication. Japanese Dutch beauty Yumi Nu made oh, history no. last month after becoming the Asian, first Asian cover uh, curve model to appear in Sports Illustrated. Here's a picture of Yumi. All right, cute, but a little, a little curvy. Was wow, this curvy. the Hasselhoff, hold on a second. Was this the bitch that filmed Hasselhoff yeah. eating the cheeseburger? The dime I think drop. So. Oh. Because it seems like she wrestled that burger away from him. <laughs> She's definitely down. She definitely had an idea about, gee, oh, that looks good, Dad. Give me that. Yeah, so Hasselhoff's daughter was yeah. filming him sloppy drunk in, in yeah. Vegas eating, eating the burger. Floor burgers. 
Yeah, floor burgers. And then, um, although I do wish people would film me when I was shit-faced and eating. Not to put it up on the internet. Just so I didn't have this shit the next day where I open the fridge and go, who stole my lasagna? And why is there marinara sauce on my face? I would have some documented evidence of it that I could look back on. All right, so uh, Hasselhoff's daughter is on the cover of Playboy Deutschland. Deutschland, and Paulina Porskova is Playboy uh, Vogue Czechoslovakia. Hey, uh, Jason. Yeah. Can I ask a sensitive, racially based question? <laughs> Go ahead. Not a, no, don't. Yes. The Go brothers, ahead. they like the big ass, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, I look at the big ass as problematic. Yes. And I'll tell you why, because I don't feel like I got enough dick for that big ass. I don't want to park my Cessna in a blimp hanger. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't need that much room. But I feel like the brothers may be able to navigate and negotiate You've that. You've asked ass. the right person this have question. I? Yeah. <laughs> you, you really have. Because in my youth, I loved the big ass. Mm -hmm. Loved it. As I've gotten, I'm 53 now. As I've gotten older and a bigger stomach, I've gone the whole different direction. Mm -hmm. I have the same issue you have. <laughs> See, they always talk about having an honest dialogue about race, but Finally. tonight on this stage, I think you're well, witnessing. You the first steps toward that honest dialogue. Yes. That is the truth. All right, Gina, sorry. All right, well, Nickelodeon is pulling a virus-themed episode of SpongeBob SquarePants because of sensitivities linked to the coronavirus pandemic. It's called Quarantined Crab. It's from the show's 12th season, centers around the virus. So in this episode, a health inspector comes Wait, to the Hold on, crab. hold on. Yeah. Are they worried about kids being traumatized? Because all you have to do is watch 10 seconds of CNN in the last fucking calendar year, and yeah. you shall be traumatized. <laughs> so if you're, I don't know how we could traumatize kids anymore. But sorry, go ahead, Gina. So this episode, uh, a health inspector comes to the Krusty Krab and finds a case of clam flu. <laughs> Shut up. In the restaurant. Uh, upon the discovery, the health inspector quarantines the patrons and tosses the sick ones in a freezer. There's another episode of SpongeBob that's been out of rotation now. It's called Midlife Crustacean, and SpongeBob, Patrick, and Mr. Krabs break into a woman's house and steal her underwear. Oh, yeah, I heard about that one. Yeah, so from now on, we're going to have to go through everything that's ever been animated and find out whether it has either racial connotations or virus connotations and eventually just wipe out the entire fucking library. Or we could just get the fuck on with it, you know what I mean? Like, when I was, uh, when I was about eight, I saw the movie Pepion in the movie Whoa. theaters <laughs> with my dad. You guys see the movie Pepion? Dustin Hoffman, Steve McQueen. Oh, there's a lot of sick shit going on in that movie. Haven't seen and I was eight, and look at me, I turned out great. <laughs> you just I mean, reminded I me of a story. Do we have time? It yes. takes 60 seconds, yeah. I think. This reminds me, I used to live in Kansas City and I was, you know, columnist there, very famous. And I remember I, I was dating a stripper and I was at her house and we were watching a movie and she has her eight-year-old sister there. And I was like, well, there's a sex scene. We, she shouldn't be watching this. And she says to me with a fucking straight face, I watched these movies with my mom when I was a kid, and look how I turned out. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> yeah, it always it always cracked me up because I uh, I did a show called Love Line with Dr. Drew for like a decade, and uh, 
we'd always have we'd always have people run into us. You know, they were thirty, and they go. I was raised on you guys. I listened to all your advice. I listened to Dr. Drew. You guys saved my life. I could have gotten into a lot of trouble if I wasn't listening to you on Loveline. By the way, can you spare some change? I gotta go to the methadone clinic and buy a hit. Like, all right, sorry, what else we got, Gina Graham? All right, well, this is crazy. So we've been talking about cryptocurrency and non-fungible tokens, which we're all gonna seem like a-holes in a few years when that word is normal, but it's still not normal yet. But a month-old cryptocurrency appears to be like a fantasy football league, but for Hollywood, mm. it's called BitClout. It offers shares of public figures. The value fluctuates with the person's pop culture relevance. So the money will go up and down as the person's popularity goes up and down. So for all the ladies who's been wa who've been watching Bridgerton, Reggie, uh, Reggae Jean Page, he's the big star that came out of that. His, yeah. if you purchase now, it's worth a lot. But Sharon Osbourne oh. has gone down. Elon Musk has the most expensive BitClout coin at $67,000. Donald Trump's is 14,000, and Kim Kardashian is next, and Alex Re Rodriguez is right after that. I got, a, this reminded me of something. Y you know how the celebrity estates keep earning out, like Michael Jackson and sure. Prince and Elvis, right. and it's like, it's insane. I don't know who the top one is, Michael Jackson or something like that, but the point is, is these people die and they make 40 million bucks for the next 100 years just because of their catalog or using their likeness or whatever. Look, I'm not the king of pop. I understand. What? I'm, I'm not on that level. But my shit's got to be worth something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, they're going to sell a couple of Crank Yanker DVDs or a Man Show rerun or some shit at some point, right? No question about Why it. Why can't I get paid now? Oh. You know what I mean? So they had like these... A reverse, like a reverse mortgage for your yeah. intellectual properties? No, they had these, okay, so they have, they have uh, any attorneys in the crowd, they have these viatical agreements or settlements, you know what I'm talking about? The way this thing works is you have a life insurance policy, you're old, you have emphysema, you have a life insurance policy, it's worth a million dollars after you die. You can sell it for 500 grand that you can spend now and then when you die, the person who gave you the 500 grand gets the million bucks. Now, you know, Elvis, Michael Jackson, James Dean, Marilyn Monroe, uh, I get it, I'm not in that league, you know? I'm more like Screech or whatever. <laughs> Don't do some, a, a bit player from Saved by the Bell, you know, but they die. But I'm, I'm gonna earn something when I'm fucking dead. I'll be goddamn if my kids are getting it. Why not? Why can't I cash out now and then you just buy in. You'd own 10% of me after I was dead. So let's just say I die, and when I'm dead, again, you know, we got a catalog and a couple of DVDs and a rerun of this and a, you know, check for that, residual check. You know, maybe I make 12 grand the year after I die. Well, you, you, you're in for a sweet 1,200 bucks if you bought, tw <laughs> if you bought 10%. That's just good business. That's good business. You may be thinking something else if I got 30 seconds. You do. Let's start a hedge fund of we, we invest in rappers. Mm. They die early. <laughs> Think I'm, Tupac is worth a gazillion dollars now. Don't you wish you guys bought in 10% of Tupac before he got shot in that BMW? But again, you don't even have to invest in big name stars because I know it's white people when Nipsey Hussle died, you were all sitting there going, who the fuck is Nipsey Hussle? Oh, no, you no, no, I used to watch him on Hollywood Squares. That guy could <laughs> rhyme any fucking words. You're right, he was the original rapper. He would rhyme. <laughs> no. No, I love that dude. But I didn't even know who fucking Nipsey Hussle was, and then they pretended like he was Tupac. Right. And so any of these rappers in death, and they die young, mm -hmm. worth a shit ton of money, we should invest in rappers. Yeah, they also do that thing with the rappers where they go, he never left the community. I know that's why he got shot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Should have fucking hightailed it out to fucking Malibu with Cher. Like Dr. Dre. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. Because, you know, Nipsey Hussle's probably, probably had a pretty, probably had the best year of his life after he died. No one had heard of him outside his little neighborhood and some people in California. I hadn't heard of him, and I like rap music. I right. hadn't heard of him. They act like he's... So we should buy it. Now, how would this conversation work, like when he was alive? Would I go like, uh, Mr. Hustle, I represent a group of investors. We got the over under on you in about 14 months. I'm sorry, you're a crip or blood or have any kind of affiliations with it's just, I'm sorry, is that a do rag or don't rag? I don't know. We just got some, we got some Silicon Valley money here. No, we just like you to pay you for 50% of what we think you're going to be worth when you're dead. There you go. Well, who wouldn't fucking take the money now? I would. I'll sell off 10% of my shit right now for like a shot of uh, rye. <laughs> That's interesting. I think we're on to something here. Does this guy looks like he likes Nipsey Hussle? He's got the serious look on his face, like no. But here's here's Nipsey's the, a friend of mine. What the fuck? Here's the thing. Here's the thing about rappers nobody's ever heard of. Um, we never heard of them either. But we're white and we're scared and we have to pretend like we're down with the cause. Oh, Nipsey, yeah, love his uh, love his beats. All right, let's do one more, Gina Grab. All right. Well, let's make it a good one. Hey. So we know that we've all, and by we I mean me, but uh, hopefully the rest of us have all gained weight in quarantine, but it's not just the people, our dogs have gotten fatter too. A new UK study found that the average dog has put on seven pounds wow. since the beginning of the pandemic. Seems dogs have been getting more treats from their owners who are home all day, and apparently guys are more generous with the treats. Pets with male owners gained an average of nine pounds over the year compared to six pounds with female owners. I like a fat dog, and I like a fat cat. Oh, they're, okay. they're aesthetically better looking. They're well if, taken if, care of. If, if, if my body was covered completely with fur, I'd be 800 pounds right now, and you fucking would love it. It's, that's a very good point, because like greyhounds and stuff, you think there's something wrong with them. Yeah. You're worried Whippet, about those. Whippets. Yeah. Yes. No one, no one likes a, a waif dog. They're no. fucking nervous and jittery. Skinny cats look like uh, somebody left them in an alley too long. You want fat. It's called yeah. Fat Cat. That's what it's called. <laughs> well, I wonder what guys are doing. Are, are, are they giving, those dogs are not getting fat because they're getting more treats. The people are ordering more Grubhub Thank and you. throwing shit to yes. them, right? No Smart. question about it. I was literally just thinking that. That is the issue. We're, more and, table scraps. And I'll just say, as a fat person, this is a discovery I've made during COVID. Did you know that the filet of fish sandwich they only give you a half a slice of cheese. No. I just noticed this. I was like, McDonald's is so fucking cheap. They only give you a half a slice of cheese. And on DoorDash, if you want a full slice, you got to pay 50 cents extra. Welcome back to Fat Talk with Jason Whitlock. <laughs> Today we tackle the filet of fish. Tomorrow we get into the double king cheese, fat burger. Thank God Jason travels with his own cheese so he can avoid <laughs> these types of situations. All right, well, can I say this about you, Jason, and your weight? Don't go getting skinny. And if you do ever get skinny, send me incremental pictures so I don't get the fucking bends. Anyone have a fat ass friend? who got the gastric bypass and then you didn't see him for seven years and they fucking come to your house and you're like, what the fuck happened to you? You're all fucking head, where's your body? And then they're like, I'm, I'm fucking, I run four miles every morning. You're like, knock it off, have a fucking donut. This is freaking me out, I, you're my fat friend. Don't ever do that shit. I'll never look like Al Sharpton, just all <laughs> head. <laughs> just a stick on a, a head on a stick. Jason Whitlock, everybody. Bring the news home, Gina Grad. 
You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. You can shoot uh, Jason a tweet at Whitlock Jason Bald Gina. Great work as per usual. We're going to bring out Nate Bargatze. Nate, you out there? Oh, okay. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move over here. We'll we'll swap. We'll swap sides. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, I appreciate thanks for it. Me. Uh, you're out. Oh no, wait. Are yeah, you're out here, right? Yes, I'm, I've been back like six years. So uh, my whole life, dude. I've never left. I guess. No, yeah, I'm back here, born and raised, uh, old Hickory. Uh, yeah. So it's the real deal. You were from old Hickory. Yeah, which I had someone, I, I just said that someone in an interview uh, told me that I said I'm from Old Hickory, and they go, it's, it's named after Andrew Jackson. And they said, oh, you know, Andrew Jackson was like a bad dude, right? And I was like, well, he's not my dad, and I was just born in the town, so I don't know where you want to go. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's not like we just woke up and talked about Andrew Jackson, yeah. and like we just broke it down every morning. <laughs> so, Old Hickory is what I call my dick. <laughs> kind of weird when I was 17, you know, to yeah. begin it with old. You want some of the old yeah, hickory? Yeah. You didn't think it through? Yeah. 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 Oh, man, I'm sapping. Watch out. <laughs> uh, the the stand-up special, by the way, The Greatest Average American is available now on Netflix. It's, uh, it is a great stand-up special. Super funny, done uh, outdoors, I think, at Universal. At yeah. Universal, yeah. Everybody had to be COVID tested, wear a mask. It was a good time. Uh, there's, I heard zero laughs during it. You can't see their face. I just yeah. thought I was bombing, dude, the whole, I mean, the whole special was like, these people hate it. I had helicopters flying over. There was a police chase going on during it, we found out. In Los Angeles? Yeah, Los Angeles. What? Yeah. Apparently Must have come over from Nevada or maybe Arizona. I think so. They said they'd never seen something like that. And <laughs> they, I would always, you know when you see police chases? It is crazy. Because if you ever see one, we don't really see them much here. But in California, I mean, it's like, you can just, every day it's like a, it's like a TV show. Yeah. You just turn on the news and you're watching someone drive for hours. I had, you know, my whole thing is get out the fucking spike strips and ram this guy and let's nip this thing in the fucking bud because I used to live up uh, Beachwood Canyon right under the Hollywood sign. Yeah. And someone called me and went, turn on the TV. And sure enough, the guy was heading up Beachwood Canyon. He was going, he was going to the Hollywood sign. And there's only one way to get to the Hollywood sign. It's Beachwood Canyon. It goes yeah. up and, you know, it's a bunch of hills and curves and stuff. But if you want to get out, you got to go back down yeah. Beachwood Canyon. This guy goes all the way up Beachwood Canyon, goes around my house. It's always fun to watch something on TV that's actually happening yeah. outside. Yeah. By the way, you know how shitty my childhood was? I was a kid, like, my greatest fun was going to the radio shack where they had the video camera and the window yeah. and the monitor yeah. and going, yeah. fuck, I can't yeah. beat myself, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. But that was big time excitement. Like, hey, son, we don't need to go to Niagara like, Falls been, this Somebody asked you if you've been on TV, you're like, a little bit. Well, kind of. Yeah, yeah time, if you go down yeah. to the radio shack yeah. in Encino yeah. and I'm there, yeah. Yeah. then you'll see me on then TV. You see, yeah, yeah. And you'll see you on TV, yeah. too, yeah. if you're standing next Do you want to be on TV? Come down with me. So... The thing goes all the way up the fucking hill, winds around, goes past my house, goes right back down Beachwood Canyon, gets on the Hollywood Freeway, takes the Hollywood Freeway, goes by Universal Studios, goes all the way out to Chatsworth, California, which is like 26 miles away, gets off at Chatsworth, goes out, drives through Chatsworth, guy eventually gets out of the car and then runs into a senior home, right? Uh -huh. Then whenever I say the cops, why don't you just fucking bump this guy and spin him out, and get him out of his car right when the chase begins? They go, well, that's too dangerous. Innocent people could get hurt. How about the 2,000 innocent people yeah. between Hollywood land and Chatsworth, <laughs> Shady Acres, yeah. and fucking yeah. that guy 
What, that guy z- drove through 55 school yeah. zones at 100 miles an yeah. hour. What about all those? How pissed would you be if your son, you got kids, right? Yeah. How old's your son? I have a girl, eight. I said son. I'll stick with son because <laughs> it makes it feel better that you're well, not going to fictionally kill my daughter right now. Well, uh, it, no. but So just go with, uh, let's go with son. No. Because I'll let it happen. I'll tell I, you that right now. I said now. son. I'll make a point with him, all right? <laughs> This boy's got to learn. I said son because I know it stings a little more when the boy goes yeah. down. But okay. <laughs> so you lose a daughter or three, you know? <laughs> Rub some dirt on it. Keep yeah. walking, you know? Yeah. But the boy goes down. Yeah. That's your namesake. Yeah. Yeah. But all right, the daughter. Yeah. Even if it's the daughter. No, I, like you're fucking... mad. I feel like you're being like, why didn't you have a boy? Like, I had a toy. You're like, you really blew it out there, Nate. You didn't yeah. have a son. And I'm like, I know, dude. I talked to my wife about it. Don't, but... hey. You ever go to China, pull out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, how pissed would you be if you lived in Chatsworth, California, and you knew this police chase started up Beachwood Canyon four hours earlier, and then your kid went out to chase the ball across the street, and this maniac ran him the fuck over. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd be pretty upset about it. You know? I guess it's that. Yeah. Yeah. Really no other good answer. Yeah, yeah, he'd just be like, I don't know, dude, I'd want to know more of the circumstances, you know? <laughs> like, uh, to be honest, uh, what kind of ball was it? Uh, you know? Yeah, I'd probably only be able to finish one half of my sandwich yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that happened. Yeah. Now, the boy gets hit. That's a full sandwich. I can't yeah, eat. I mean, it can't do it. Yeah, I got do you. they ever get away? That's what I always think. When you see them do it, you think a news helicopter is tracking you. Mm-hmm. They found you. So right. you think professional police officers can't find... Like right. they were watch- the whole world's watching you on TV. Does it? Do they ever... Just go, yeah, the guy, and that was it. He got out. And <laughs> yeah. And what? Like, he did it. Well, it was at night, and he shut his lights off, and that's the last we seen yeah. of him. Went under a bridge, and we didn't, I don't know what happened. He didn't come out. What's under that bridge? He didn't come out. No, it never, it never works. As a matter of fact, though, you know, I've, I've always said I got a good way to get uh, the scary element off the street. So I got, I got a police chase version of this too. Now one is, I live in Los Angeles. We got a lot of shady folks living out there. And so my plan was to put a big sign in front of the Coliseum that said, free cockfight, Raiders fans only. <laughs> and anybody who showed up, we just throw a net on them, right? <laughs> like, you know, your deadbeat dad, yeah, felon, yeah. warrant, arrest. Yeah. There's, believe you me, you show, yeah. you do it that noon on a Wednesday, any fucker walks <laughs> into that Coliseum. <laughs> that ain't a taxpayer. Yeah. <laughs> My second idea was to stage police chases. So we get a professional stunt driver Put him in a modified car, but we make it look like a piece of shit with the Bondo on the side and everything. And we stage a police chase. And anybody who runs out onto the bridge with a cardboard bar sign like yelling, go OJ, or any, anyone who comes out to cheer it on, yeah. fucking arrest yeah. all those people. Yeah. I know you're up to no good. Yeah, that's you, pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah. the way I clean up the town. Just kidding. <laughs> Just, uh, just, I love the idea of just all these police chases going on and none of them are real. Of, <laughs> and just rounding people up every day. Great ratings for the local oh, news. I mean, yeah. We that, got Skycopter 5 and brought to you by Stater Brothers in the sky. No one, no one can watch Price is Right ever again because it's just this news is on the whole time. <laughs> that's right. Because don't they always like bump a TV program that's on? We break like, in. You break in. You oh, break I got in a, every day. I got a good buddy movie for us to star in. All right. I know you're always looking for a vehicle. Yeah. See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> We're a couple of young hotshot producers, right? Yeah. Our competition, the Malachi brothers, we hate those guys. But they're doing their big game show. They're big syndicated game show and they're gonna run it live in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week. And if that thing gets ratings, we're kaput. But what can we do? We stage a chase in the middle of it and they break away to us doing it and we have our project written all over the car. 
It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm just yeah. beating it out. You just, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, just spitballing here. I'm just spitballing uh, here. I, I, I do like it. Yeah. Yeah. We, all, right. all right. Sorry, it was stupid. All right. Going <laughs> yes. They're not all fucking tense people. I yeah. <laughs> should, should be up front. So, Nate, you're out here. You're, uh, you're, uh, how long did it physically take you to get here from uh, Old Hickory? Uh, to oh, like to drive here? Yeah. Uh, actually, I came from over there. Uh, it's like 25 minutes, something like that, downtown. I mean, it's not like a, it's not just like a town that's like got hay and stuff rolling around. It's yeah. A, it's a normal, normal American town. Paved roads now. Yeah, yeah. We had to get once, the, once the road got not as bumpy. We really spit got going. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Uh, the fellas. Who uh, wear uh, bib overalls that got both straps over yeah. the shoulders now, yeah, not yeah. just the one? Once we got the cows off the track, we really picked up some <laughs> speed. My GPS jumped quick after that. <laughs> you know what I did find out today? I used to, so we used to have a theme park here in Nashville called Opryland Theme Park. And it was great, it was awesome. They shut it down to put a mall for zero reason, that the mall's awful now. <laughs> like, but I worked there. And so I worked with a, I remember, I, used, I had a joke about this, where, but I worked with someone and they, they, it, their names were John and Jane Doe. Wow. And so I was like, and the joke is I think that they were just messing with me. So I've always thought they were just lying to me and I believed it for mm -hmm. 30 years. And then I met a dude today that also worked there and was like, no, those were real people. John. And so my whole Jane world Doe. just got kind of turned. I thought, I thought they were real. Then I was like, they were just lying and I was dumb and believed it. Yeah. To now, they're back real. Do you know? A couple things. Grand Old Opry, is that out here? Yeah, it's by Opryland. Yeah. What year that open? Uh, yeah. It's been a long like, time like ago. In the like, 30s? Yeah, like 1500s. Go ahead. It sounds cool now, 1936. A little, a little bit before Columbus got here. But. <laughs> It sounds cool now, Grand Old Opry, but when yeah. they opened it and the fucking paint was still wet, it had the word old right in it. Did yeah, that it's like throw old people Hickory. off. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd be put off by that. I'll tell you something. <laughs> but you couldn't complain back then. I, I there was yeah. no yeah, yelp. Yeah. It was like it is what it is. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm so upset. I'm gonna carve shit into this tree bark <laughs> and let the whole town know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the name Ole. <laughs> the, um, I was thinking about John Doe and Jane Doe, because those, you know, when they find the headless corpse in the river and they yeah. can't identify it, they go, oh, it's a John Doe or it's a Jane Doe. And then I thought to myself, those are our names. Like, I had an English girlfriend. I was like, what, what are your names when you find a headless person in the river? Yeah. Joe Blocks. Joe Blocks? Joe Blocks, she said. That's what yeah. we call our John Doe's. And then I met some dude I was working with. He was from Sweden. And I said, uh, what name do you have for the homeless dead guy who's been beheaded and floating in the river? What is his name? And he went, well, we don't have that. And I was like, I'm going to fucking move there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys never find un yeah. unidentified bodies. Yeah. This that is we a, get utopia. It, I love these. It is funny to think we get it so much that we like. Well, we gotta give them a name, dude. Like it's like <laughs> it's so much. It's not like a couple times. It's like it's overwhelming. Right. How many people are dying and we don't know who they are. Right. And then we've been like, just name them. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, such John and Jane Doe. Everybody knows. Do you guys also feel as long as we're going down this name path? Yeah. This thing where it's like. The, we're interviewing on Dateline the undercover agent that infiltrated the Medellin cartel in Tijuana. She won't give us her real name. We'll call her Sarah. And then they just put Sarah and, cry, and they write her name on her. Yeah. They never fucking use her name. They just go, what's going on with Pablo Escobar? Then they'll go, hey, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah, nice to Sarah meet you. Sarah this, Sarah that. They don't do fucking that. So don't fucking insult me with your fake couldn't, fucking names. Couldn't or don't tell me and call her Sarah. Yeah, just don't call her anything. Yeah, don't call her anything. Yeah. Do, uh, I always think with that too, if the, you're protecting them from Pablo Escobar and his group. Right. Well, wouldn't his group be like, I know that shape? 
of a person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you had someone in your family that turned on you and, they, and your son goes and sits there, you're going to be like, I, that shit head looks familiar, dude. Oh. I think I have a pretty good idea. If, There's maybe three people I'm going to go talk to and I'll have it narrowed down. If, By just the shape alone of their body. If, if, if that's what I would want to hide, I'd be like, just make it, I just want to be behind a wall. Yeah. And they show a shadow that's perfect. I'll tell you, I'll, I don't want to be a one-upper, but as long as we're picking shapes, I'm going with the muscle guy on the plywood, and I just put my head through the hole. That's what you should you know do. What I mean? You should do that. Fuck that dad bod. I don't want yeah. to take any shit. No, you're right. Like, if my sister was in deep cover to try to infiltrate yeah. the cartels, I'd be like, that's Lauren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can yeah. tell she's pear-shaped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. I'd blow the lid off that shit. Easily. You would get to the bottom, but if you had behind the thing with the muscles, you're like, dude, I don't have muscles like that. And they'd be like, you're right. And then they would help you. You would help go find the yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'd have to get the chick because there's always the hot chick in the bikini on the plywood, too. So I'd have to It'd have... be two people. Yeah, we yeah. need two people. But that's all right. I just tell her not to talk. Yeah. <laughs> her name's Sarah. I was thinking about the... Uh... <laughs> I was thinking about the cartels, and this is a true story, and it's probably the worst sign for a city ever. Uh, remember El Chapo? Yeah. Remember he escaped? Oh, yeah. yeah. So he escaped. They built him a tunnel. By the way, if I was in the joint, I'd be like, how long's the tunnel? It's four miles. Like, uh, bribe a fucking guard. Yeah. It's called Mexico, yeah. people. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to be out this weekend. Yeah. I got a big soccer match. You yeah. know what I mean? But how big they, is the tunnel? They, they, they dug a tunnel. They put him on like a mechanics creeper and they put, they put tracks down. They they dragged him out of the tunnel. But here is the, the biggest indictment for a city in, in, in any land, in, in any part of the world. They pull him out. He pops out through like a storm drain or a manhole cover or something like. He's on the streets in Mexico. He commandeers a car, like grabs a car, throws a dude out of the car, takes off in the car. The fucking car breaks down a quarter mile later. <laughs> he then jumps out of that car, commandeers a second car, and that fucking car overheats in 30 <laughs> feet, and he gets busted. Yeah. By the way, if you drive the uh, highways of Los Angeles, you're going to see some versions of that. Yeah, yeah. But that shit would have never happened in Germany. Yeah. Yeah. He'd still be going 200 miles an hour in a fucking electric yeah. BMW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is a bad sign for your city where two random cars... Statistically. Statistically, he took picked two random cars. They both fucking broke down before he got up the on ramp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not a good sign for a city. How do you... Like, their tunnel building is unreal, though. Because oh, yeah. building Those... a tunnel, I would think I would be on top of the ground just being like, I don't even know how to get started. And like, how do you even, I get the idea of it, but you gotta make a turn at some point. That's gotta be the most, And just, yeah. it's gotta, you know, and then he's, you know, he's not a, obviously, he's not reasonable. So I don't think when he's like, how long is it gonna take? And you're like, it's gonna be a while, man, cause that's kind of crazy. Yeah. I'm just like a guy, you know, I'm not like a hired tunnel guy. It's not like you called a tunnel company. No. I don't think there is tunnel companies. No. So. I think they call them boring companies. Just specifically for tunnels? Yeah, they're boring companies, which is... If I work for a boring company and I answered the phone, I'd be like, Hello? <laughs> this is the boring company. <laughs> yeah. You know what I did this <laughs> weekend? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. I got two more feet in a tunnel that I wasn't at. You know how long it took? Is the, there only hire... Do they... People... Are well, I wouldn't do the tunnel. Like, if I was in charge of digging the tunnel, I'd do the photo op with the silver shovel yeah. and then immediately just hand it to a day laborer yeah, yeah. and walk That's the how they catch El Chapo is he always does the Photoshop yeah. and that's how they find him at the end. <laughs> I, is there yeah, they do tunnels. I, you know, it's kind of interesting because all the drug cartels have the tunnels that go under the border, right? Yeah. So they're actually becoming like foremost experts in tunneling, <laughs> if you think about it, you know? The, the Latin people. Do you know, is there a group that you probably want their tunnel? 
Because there's probably some people like, hey, here's our tunnel, and you're like, I don't, I don't know. You yeah. want like a trusted name, yeah, of tunnel building, right? Yeah. To be like, no, this guy's good. My uncle used this guy. Uh, you know, then, Mexican tunnel is no good. The only really thing Mexican improves is if the word food is after it. Yeah. <laughs> not tunnel, not spaceship, <laughs> not bullet train. You put Mexican in front of almost any innovation, it fucks it up. You put it in front of nachos, we're, we're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to really think to yourself as a culture. We're really exploring yeah. the world tonight. If we just take your heritage and put it in front of something good and it fucks it up, it's gut check time, Mexico. Because, <laughs> you know, you go Japanese bullet train, you go, oh, I'm fucking buy me a yeah. seat. Yeah. A Japanese supersonic airplane or something. Like, I'll fucking ride that shit. You put Mexico in front of supersonic <laughs> airplane, yeah. we got a problem, people. Yeah. You would be like, I don't think it's what we think it is. That's what yeah. you would think. You'd be oh, like, it's probably not what we joke. think it he's is. It's a joke. He's got yeah. a he's got a donkey that walks yeah. backwards. Yeah. Yeah. I know this fucking yeah. joke. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not falling for this shit again. Let's get some quesadillas over here. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. I I love that all the all the countries are about to go to space and Mexico's like, no, we're going below ground. That's our like they're going we're going farther from space than any country is going. Man, you're right. We all live below ground. We had the race to space. They're going down to the bottom. <laughs> right. just going. I want we had we had Russia as our competition. Yeah. I wonder if like we gotta beat these Guatemalans. Yeah. Get in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> It's probably a bad sign universally when there's a lot of tunneling going on yeah. in your community. That is you know not what good. I mean? Yeah, not yeah. good. It's not a good sign. Now, you want to tunnel under a river, you got me, because that is, that's the subway. That's the tube. You know yeah. what I mean? And, uh, ooh, I was thinking about it. In England... During the Blitz, right, when the Germans were bombing, they were firebombing England, they would all go down to the tube and they would sleep at night. Think how bad it would be if Germany ever bombed Manhattan and you had to fucking go down and sleep in the subway at night. Like, Well, there's already mole people down there. Yeah, you'd wake up with shit all over the have side you, of your ear. Yeah. Do you know about the mole people? You no. You heard about them? Supposedly the people that live uh, under the subway. Like, there's a whole community right have you heard about it i could also be making all of this up no no there's they have an it. unreal chance but i think they could be making it up with me to be honest we could have all read the same article about the we watched this video but supposedly there's all these more people there's a whole community that lives on the subway and they would have they'd have tiers of people that would go so some people would never come out and mm -hmm. then you'd have your people that you would like look normal enough to be like go get food or go get whatever mm -hmm. and so they could go out and be amongst you know yeah you have to be somewhat decent well looking. also for the ones who never got out if they did get out and it was a cloudless sky their fucking eyes would yeah. kill them yeah, 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 that yeah, would yeah. suck oh they would die yeah yeah well so though in they have the mole people living in the subway in new york los angeles has river people living in it oh really but it's not really a river ever seen the los angeles yeah. river it's a cement flume that takes yes, shit yeah, to the yeah, bay yeah, yeah not not a sportsman's paradise yeah <laughs> I don't know. oh i pulled up a fucking world-class amberjack over there last yeah. time but me and the boy fishing. we get the sea dews <laughs> yeah there you go the salmon uh, they don't swim upstream they walk on the sidewalk next <laughs> to it like yeah, the, so if you go down to L.A., you'll see the homeless encampments are in the river, which, uh, I don't know, it's kind of good. I mean, I, you know, actually, maybe this homeless thing is a, is a net positive as I, as I think about it, you know? Yeah, because, like, I lived in Los Angeles my whole life. For the first half of my life, I was fucking dirt poor, and I drove beat up pickup trucks, and you know I had uh, did construction, and I had an apartment with like three dudes, and ate top ramen, and I thought of myself as a loser, 
But if I could just pass homeless encampments on the way back to my fucking futon that I shared with a dude, yeah. I'd feel like the fucking king of the world. Yeah. You know, I, I may be a loser, but I'm not fucking getting raped at night by the guy in the next refrigerator box. Yeah, you're one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't throw around the word blessed yeah. that often. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in this you, would, you would never strive for anything because you'd be like, I think I'm living too good. To be honest, yeah, and you would just never have made it though. Oh, you're you right. Would have, you would have been like, I'm, you know, it's going. You I are blessed. A, yeah, I'd be like, let's get a third dude onto this futon. Yeah, yeah, we can afford it, dude. Like, the, I, as an adult in my first apartment, shared a futon with a dude, and later in the same apartment, shared bunk beds, but. I've also figured out if you can configure a bunk bed so they're not stacked, but one face is this way and the other goes that way, now you're a winner. Because there's a drawer in it. Yeah. <laughs> that never fucking works and you yeah. never put anything in. Yeah. Did you have uh, roommates when uh, you had your yeah. lean years? We, uh, I was just, so we, the roommate when I lived with here, we had a, we had a one bedroom apartment. We shared a one bedroom apartment. And because uh, we were 20, and then another guy wanted to move in with us, so we got a two bedroom apartment just so he could have his own bedroom. We were like, you know, he's being weird and apparently wants his own bedroom and not share with us. Uh, we, uh, we also bought an alligator during this what? time. Yeah, when I was 20. That uh, it came in alligators, those little ones. We thought we were so dumb that we thought, well, we could be nice and it would become our friend. <laughs> and it's a, you know no matter however you look at it it's an alligator and that's just not their thing you know like they're just not your friend and we had to take it back to the store because you know you shouldn't have an alligator in Hermitage Tennessee that's what I've learned it's not it doesn't grow there very well <laughs> my, my roommate came home with two bunny rabbits right and we thought it'd be fun to have rabbits. And we just let them run around in the apartment. Like they didn't even have a cage. But the thing about rabbits is if you keep feeding them, they'll just keep growing, man. And these two fucking things were like morbidly obese and there was shitting everywhere and landlord was pissed off. And at a certain point, I came home, I said to my roommate, Donnie, where'd, uh, where'd the rabbits go? He goes, oh, I set them free. <laughs> they go, uh, what do you mean you set them free? I took them up to the Hollywood Hills. Oh, you mean the place that's infested with coyotes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You took the two morbidly obese rabbits that have never been outside of an apartment and you set them free? Yeah. I said, the only fucking chance those rabbits are going to make it through the night is if the coyotes think it's a trick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's no way. There's no fucking yeah, yeah. way those rabbits. You set them free. They're yeah. in fucking rabbit hell right now. Yeah. Set them free. Although it did, be, it did make me think about my kids, you know what I mean? If I ever just get tired of paying for... Uh, just set them free. Set them free. Yeah, just set them free. Them. We let them go. Yeah. You live in the Hollywood Hills. There's coyotes everywhere. And somebody will always tell you a story about having a little dog that they let out in the yard at night and was eaten by a coyote. Yeah. And I never say it, but I always think, good. <laughs> I fucking hate little fucking dogs. <laughs> and by the way, that's just Darwin taking out the trash, man. If your fucking dog's not man enough to fight off a coyote, then so be it. Yeah. <laughs> Good for that coyote. But you don't ever say that out loud to the person? No, I don't, uh, I don't say that loud because I, I, <laughs> I made a mistake once with uh, Jimmy Kimmel. He was getting all emotional talking about his old pet when he was a kid. They had a, they had a dog, <laughs> a small dog, and it was blind. And he was getting emotional about the blind dog. And I said, how did... What happened? And he said, it fell in the pool and it drowned. And I started laughing my ass <laughs> off. And he was like, that's <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. I was like, but it is funny. You yeah. know, the blind dog just thinking it's walking out yeah. to take a shit and ending yeah. up in Davy Jones' locker, right? 
He's like, and you named it Fluffy, which made this yeah. fucking story that much funnier that Fluffy <laughs> drowned in the pool. Fluffy sunk to the bottom. I, you know, I didn't get, after I was laughing, I couldn't circle back and get great detail. Yeah. Because the problem is, is when you start laughing at someone's story that's very painful to them, yeah. they don't want to share particular details yeah. after that. Because I think, especially with a comedian, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. more fodder yeah. for Fluffy. Yeah. He didn't want to go down that road. You have to just get a straight face of like, sorry about the man. So Fluffy was blonde in both eyes? You just start asking real serious yeah. questions. Yeah, like, I had, yeah. Yeah, I had. And also, whatever happens to your dog after it's blind, I'm not interested in. That means at least the thing's 88 in human years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, who would let the dog out by a pool that's blind? Well, that, those are the kind of hard-hitting questions yeah. I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I want to blow the lid off this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> this could happen again. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I got to bring, <laughs> I got to bring your Aunt Chippy to justice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his Aunt Chippy, his name, man. Chippy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, his aunt's name. I would argue when you're named Chippy, we can leave off the aunt. Yeah, yeah. Which Chippy? Chippy yeah. Johnson, Chippy Wilson, Chippy. Yeah. Yeah. It's There's aunt. only yeah. one Chippy. There's only one Chippy. We don't need her title. Yeah. <laughs> we know her role. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. They do that with ants, right? Aunt Chippy. They don't do that. They don't go, Dad Nate. You just Nate. Yeah. They don't really go mom and then say your wife's name, but at some point you rise to the level of uncle and aunt and then you get that. And listen, here's a time saver for all you assholes who have uncles who aren't really your uncle. Spare me the conversation where you explain it to me. They go, my uncle Bert owns a used RV dealership. He's a good guy. He's not my real, I mean, he, he was a good friend of the, I don't care. Yeah. I'm not going to go fucking ask for Uncle Bert's paperwork. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's always that, my uncle so-and-so, and then they go, he's, he's my dad's, he's a good friend of mine. I've always yeah. known, he's the only, he, I've known him since I, you give me the yeah, explanation. Yeah, the whole thing. And don't give me your fucking fake uncle explanations. And... It then brings into question next time you want to call someone uncle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now I'm thinking, real uncle or fucking drinking buddy of your dad's who molested you when you were nine? Which is it? Which is it? Which are the hard-hitting questions you want to ask? They start laughing at their face. Uh, yeah, you should, like, when they do that, too, you should be like, oh, I'm sorry, am I giving off that I wanted to know all this? Like, you're, you'd be almost mad at yourself to be like, I, I shouldn't be making you think I'm like, yeah, get into it, man. My posture should be I more closed off. Yeah, it should I be should like, roll I my don't shoulders. even care about the story, much yeah. less how this guy's in your family. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. But you guys all do that or have been on the losing end of, well, he's, they love. start off with my uncle, and then at some point you get into a long-winded explanation about who they really are. Which, again, just makes me think he tried to fuck you once when he, he was drunk, because once you get rid of the blood, now we're just... Yeah. And that's, that's where you go with it. That's where I yeah. go. I don't think anybody's going to do it ever again to you, to be honest. Now, that knowing that they're going to go, you don't, wanna, you don't know where he's going in his head. <laughs> No, as soon as you explain to me this person who you described as related to you isn't related to you, if you're a chick and you're under 50, I assume he tried to fuck you. Yeah. Oh, it's a chick. Yeah. Or dude. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts, Nate? I mean, that was a pretty good one right there. Uh, <laughs> So I'm trying to build off of it, you know what I mean? Like, how do you, <laughs> you gotta head back that to tree's old been Hickory. planted, so like, let's see. What's the better old, the Grand Old Opry or Old Hickory? Um, Grand. I'm, well, I'm from Old Hickory, so I would say that. We had our own uh, police department growing up. We were Lake. There's so inside of Old Hickory, there was another. It's almost like another town called Lakewood, mm -hmm. and it, they ended up shutting it down. But it was like they had their own police department, and it was only like a couple miles long. And, I mean, they would just give tickets to everybody because they didn't have anything to do. Right. So it was just a, the whole town was just a speed trap yeah. that you grew up in. And then they finally was like, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. 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 
And, and by the way, when you do that thing with the cop where you go, uh, what's wrong, no one's robbing a bank? Well, evidently not, because they're just standing by the side of your car, yeah, right? Yeah, you have a yeah. fucking ticket for expired tabs, you right? You can see, uh, I always look, because so, you see cops, like, you know, they sit and wait for you. But uh, phones have helped out a lot because you see them a lot of times. They're just looking at their phone, and you're yeah. like, I, I, "I was flying by that guy." Uh, I'm not a fan of cop cars not looking like cop cars anymore. Now they're driving like Ford Explorers, and they don't have the oh, roller yeah. rack on top. I spent my youth looking at the silhouette of cop cars. Like I could read it in the rearview mirror at night. You could tell, "Oh, that's a." That, that's a Ford Fury over there. That's a, that's a Lincoln, whatever. That's a Crown Vic, you know? You knew the Crown Vic, you knew the de you knew the grill, you knew the lights, you could see the fucking shit on top. Where you guys stand with this? I passed this guy yesterday. The guy who's half a cop, like he's driving the Ford Explorer. It's kind of copped out, but it's not your municipality, he's, a, he's official. He may be like bomb squad or something. Like he has a couple extra antennas and then smoked rear windows and he's official something, but he's not a cop. Do you still fucking blast past that guy? Uh, I feel like he can get lights on somehow. Mm -hmm. Like that's the, if he's like, you know, if you're like, do you have lights? He's like, I mean, I can get them. Like it would be like right. a thing. Like he's like, they're not just on. It's right. kind of a thing to get them on, right? But I can get them on if I have to get them on. So you don't blast that. You don't blast uh, past that. Dude. I don't. You don't want to. But what if? Because what if he tells someone? I don't think you blast past many. But I will if they come up and it's like uh, mall security. Like mm -hmm. you think it's a cop, you slow, and then you go right by that guy. Right. To yeah. always let him know I can still do whatever. <laughs> you know. Like you get. Just to. You know, a little awareness. You're not in your mall right now, dude. Do you guys... <laughs> You're out in the ocean. This is where sharks live. I just... I say all this stuff to myself. Uh, all right, last question, Nate. <laughs> what fucks up the word cop more? Mall or Mexican? <laughs> I'm bringing uh, it around. Yeah, I think Mexican's the real deal. Mexican cop, you don't want any piece of. I mean, that's, there's no rules. I knew, I knew they didn't have a whole lot of rules for their own when I was in Tijuana, when I was like 19, and there was a motorcycle cop going down Revolution Boulevard, and he was riding a wheelie. <laughs> that says <laughs> we do what we want that do. says you could find me the fucking yeah. hooker's corpse in my trunk yeah. and I'm 20 bucks away from free yeah. if you ask that guy you're like hey do you know the cartel he's like what do you think and he pops a willy <laughs> and goes yeah we've met don't worry about it Nate Bargatze everybody thank you thank you the greatest average American available now man that was funny all right. So until next time, Santa Pro for Nate Bargazzi and Gina Grad and Bald Brian and Jason Whitlock saying Mahalo.